What's up, Dream Media family? This is Zach. Welcome back to another episode. We are down here at the Just Video Walls headquarters in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, learning everything about micro LED, video walls, aspect ratios, pixel pitches, and we wanted to make a video on energy consumption and lifespan. So today I'm gonna be bringing on our national sales director, Kellen, as well as Skylar from Just Video Walls to open up some dialogue on these topics. If you're interested in learning more about a video wall system or you'd like to get a system design put together for you, reach out today and schedule a free video consultation to get qualified and we can do everything for you guys from the video wall to the speakers, amplifiers, processors, and everything in between. We do the full project management and we're nationwide. All right, over to you, Kellen and Skylar. Take it away. All right, Skylar, um, we're going to talk about uh, some frequently asked questions continuing yep. this series. So uh, one that was kind of brought up was the energy consumption, you know, power requirements yep. to run a video wall like mm -hmm. this. It's a lot different than plugging in a projector. But then we're also going to talk about some of the uh, lifespan of the technologies, you know, half-lives uh, of the displays mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. You know, it is a question that we get from time to time. And uh, I think what drives that is the fear that these things are just going to drain my bank. Right? It's like so much energy required. Like you can or see an electrician standpoint, it's like, you right. know, what do I need a pre-wire for? Is sure. it going to be Absolutely. a separate sub panel with, you know, 80 20 amp breakers right something crazy. right and so. and this is why it's important that you partner with a reputable company such as yourself like as a consumer to to do these installations and to make sure that these things are right because right. you're going to be working with us and we're going to tell you immediately how many circuits you need to run a wall based on the type of technology the size of the wall the type of processor Right? Those are the things that impact that. It does require more energy than a typical projector or OLED display. Like OLEDs become very energy and efficient. And some of the video walls are mm -hmm. pretty crazy too. Yeah, especially if you get brighter <laughs> for like yeah. for like an outdoor one that's like a five or 6,000 knitter. Yeah. Like that takes a, quite a bit of energy to, to pump out those LEDs because they're a bunch of tiny light bulbs. What we don't want to do is like, you know, cast fear upon this because it's not a lot. Yeah. It's it's relatively speaking, it just depends on what you compare it to. Some of the questions that we have are, you know, trying to plan this out for builds, pre-wiring requirements, power right. consumptions, you know, lifespan of the technologies. Yeah. So these are smaller topics that we can kind of round up into one. It's not something to be scared of, but it is going to be something that you need to plan for. It's going to require right. more power than a traditional TV mm -hmm. or even a projector if this is going to go into a media space, that sort of thing. Let me start by just explaining how that all gets connected. I think that's that's a good place to, to begin because there's two connections that are made. There's a data and a power connection. Yep. Data and power come into every, uh, every cabinet that goes on the wall and then they sort of daisy chain to each other. And what we don't want to do is just kind of willy nilly like go and buy a bunch of cabinets and, and get a wattage number and then just make assumptions off of that. So we take all the math and all of that off of the table, the design of it for your customer and for you as well, so that you have a repeatable process that works every single time. So we know exactly where the outlets need to go. If we need more outlets, we know how many outlets, the amperage of them, it's all done for you so that the system will work perfectly no matter what type of content you display on it. The wattage requirement of these is higher than a typical display, but it's not ridiculous. When we calculate it, like this wall here, I think is what we used when we made, made the general calculation, but it's like 22 cents an hour, which is about the same as like a, a dryer, what a clothes dryer. that you're already mm -hmm. using in your home. Yeah, it's not gonna destroy your bank account to, to run these walls, even if you run them full time. Nobody's watching these walls with just pure white on the screen. And that's where like sometimes when you see those wattage numbers, like the crazy high wattage numbers, that's what you're seeing is yeah. the full maximum capacity. output, yeah. right? So, and, and these are designed to not limit that output based on like auto gain controls or anything like that within the system. There's, it's full bore, and yeah. right? if you wanna put 5,000 nits on this, on this uh, display here, on every single pixel, you can do that. And of course, it's gonna require a lot of wattage to, to drive that. But even when you're doing that, the amount of the, the dollar per watt, the kilowatt hour cost is not, it's not crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be less than a 
cup of Starbucks a day. Right, I mean, yeah. average, I would say, if you're using it mainly for media consumption, you may want to use this to display some art, you know, and, and you would have it on most of the day, sure. mm -hmm. I would imagine, if, if that's the case. So, um, yeah, if you're just using it for average media consumption, I would say two to four hours a day. Potentially, yeah. if you're watching news, mm -hmm. if you're you know clicking it on for an hour before work type of thing, and then coming yep. home and watching a football game or something, that's two or three hours. So yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I would I would suggest kind of leaning towards the higher side of that because of what micro LED does open up for you in terms of application. Yeah, you right. Because it's not you're just, just for movies, <laughs> right? Like that's to your point. Like you know, if you have art, it's like show the art, or like with this 32 by nine behind us. Like if I had this in my living room, I'd have like a portal to a different view every morning yeah. that I'd wake up with. And so I'd have that just running because that's my view, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And you will find yourself using them more than you would a traditional display because it's confined in its application compared to, to micro LED. One of the services that we're gonna be able to provide to our customers is you know, not only being able to plan out what's required from a pre-wiring standpoint, a lot mm -hmm. of these will, I don't know, uh, maybe more retrofit, maybe more, you know, mm -hmm. plan ahead, new construction type of thing, but not only will we be able to give physical, tangible requirements from like a power standpoint, planning where the outlet should go, you know, but we'll be able to anticipate what type of BTUs are, these are potentially. Yeah, that's exactly right. Anticipate, yep. you know, any, uh, any heat, thermals, you know, you want to be comfortable in the room. So if that's getting a HVAC guy involved to, to get a return in there to dissipate some of that heat that's expelling from the displays, or if that is, you know, not, not to mention the other electronics that we're gonna be feeding into this, Mad VRs, amps for your speakers, if mm -hmm. this is a theater type of setting. So, you know, that, that's something that's gonna be more in our Dream Media Plus program um, that these definitely fall under. You know, that's the experience that you're going to get with us is that, that experience of you guys on the LED wall mm -hmm. um, side of things and then us on just how it all goes together, installation and just the project management and planning to get this thing implemented. That's right. Um, for your customer. I would also say another reason why that's so important is, is you can't ignore one of those things. Yeah, because, exactly. Because if you ignore one of those things, the entire system comes crashing down. You are examining and looking at all of those simultaneously. Yeah, not to right? mention, I mean, the, the internet. If you don't have a good infrastructure for internet i mean right that's gonna kill a lot of the experience <laughs> yeah, too absolutely uh, yeah. you need you need content feeding into it's a holistic it, so. view of the entire system yeah. and how all the bits and parts it play definitely together. extends outwards from the media wall and that's right. that you're you know that's you're going to be your crown jewel and your in your main baby but um there's there's a lot that goes into i want this so a video wall like this i know you mentioned that it's roughly depending on location and kilowatt mm -hmm. um, pricing you know it's about 22 cents an hour to run this so so you know a quarter an hour but what is the actual like power requirements. You yeah, know, it's a 32 by nine aspect ratio. From an electrician standpoint, roughly what what power requirements are needed for yeah. something like this? So this wall, I believe if I understand correctly, is running on two 20 amp circuits. That requirement changes with every single little tweak of the system that happens. If we go from COB to SMD, that changes. If we take one of the columns away, that changes. You know, the type of content that your average user is gonna use, that changes. Now we specify everything based on the max, so we know we have enough headroom. You can't just point to a system and say like, that's your average. I'd say this wall is probably uh, like 4,000 watts if it's doing full bore white, then you'd probably be at somewhere around like 4,000 watts. And you need sunglasses. You would need sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's bright. Uh, or it's you would need more ambient light, right? Yeah, to yeah. like help, help right. your eyes adjust to that. Back to the electrical side, you know, like it's not a one size fits all. Being able to pull that data in and make the right recommendations for every single system exactly. with a process that is reliable and repeatable is important. It's about the application. This is a 600 nit wall. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's at, it's at 60% and it's plenty bright for this environment. You know, again, it just always comes back to the application. You can't put a blanket rule on 
number of watts per square foot, for example. And you need to think of it differently than a TV, because when you get a TV, you get a 65 inch and you look at the spec and the spec says X number of watts, which isn't the same for micro LED. It depends on the panel, it depends on the module, it depends on the pixel technology, it depends on if it's indoor or outdoor, like so many variables go into it. And so you have to make certain that whoever you're working with knows what they're doing. Somebody's making the investment and planning for this system properly, how long can a customer expect that these will last them? Right, yeah. And what is a possible upgrade path if- Oh yeah, you know, sure. Things, mm -hmm. if, if things evolve, obviously, in technology, so. It's like some people will pay a lot of money for an experience that lasts a very short amount of time, right? And that's, sometimes that's just what people value and there's nothing wrong with that. Some people value a system that they know that they can use for the next 20 years. And I'm happy to say that MicroLED checks both of those boxes, right? Uh, if you're looking for a system that gives you an amazing experience, there's no better display to do that than MicroLED. And if you're looking for a system that's gonna last a really long time, there's no better technology yeah. than MicroLED. And so just to kind of put it in context, like the projectors that have switched to laser now are running 20,000 hours, which is fantastic because if you remember, not that long ago, bulb-based projectors were like 5,000 hours, right? Yeah. If you're yeah. lucky, right? Sometimes they'd blow up before that, or you just switched bulbs because the image degraded. But yeah, the half-life was terrible. Right, involved. but with micro-LED, we're talking about 100,000 hours for the half-life, which is just a value of brightness. The LEDs have become half as bright as what they were. Now, that being said, like, you know, technology does advance, like things get better. You know, if you find that uh, you, you wanna change your system or upgrade it. We do have some options in the micro LED world. With the micro LED system, you have cabinets, you have modules, and you have a processor. The processor is easily upgradable. That's something that you can, like if tomorrow 8K is what you want, maybe you start with a 1080p system and you work your way up, you get a 4K, 4K upgraded processor, then you upgrade to our 8K, which will do 120 frames per second for gaming or whatever it is. And you may say like right now, what I can afford is a 1.5 pitch. But what I really want is a 1.2. There's some questions about why that's what you want, because really that's that's not driven by resolution, and we'll talk about that in another video. It's driven by perception. But you may say, like, what I what I really need is a 1.2, but what I can afford today is a 1.5. And that's fine. You know, you can do that. And then if at some point in the future we need to upgrade that to a 1.2. We can do that too. It just involves, you know, changing potentially the, the cabinets and the modules. The processor can stay the same, so we don't have to do any rewiring. We don't have to do anything like that other than maybe, you know, thinking ahead of time and running some extra spare cables so that our processor can support the tighter pixel pitch in the future. Right. Um, so those are just some, those are some things that you can do uh, with micro LED. The, the nice thing is you can, even change what aspect ratio you want to do uh, potentially. Like if you first install uh, like a 16 by nine and then you say, well, I want to reconfigure that or you buy a couple of extra cabinets for reconfiguring it in the future, you can reconfigure it in the future. Yeah. Um, each of our systems comes pre-calibrated. We have a double calibration that we do on all of our, all of our systems. We calibrate it at the factory and then we calibrate it here at the headquarters before it ships out to the customer. The calibration stays with each cabinet and each module. So you can, you can sort them and move them around however you want in the future to change the landscape of your display. Everything is based on how you plan to use it. Yeah. It's not based on product A, B, C, D, or E. It's based on how do you plan to use it and then customizing the product to fit those needs, right? right? That's the process, that's the right way to do it yeah. and, and really give customers that awesome application. In terms of the power consumption and the longevity though, uh, this checks the box of the person who wants both the amazing experience and the wall that will last them for as, oh, as long as their house will yes. will stand, practically speaking, right? Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, Dream Media family, what do you think? They're gonna last forever, essentially, <laughs> and they're scalable. That's what's so cool about this technology, guys, is like, say you move and you wanna switch up your aspect ratio because your wall got bigger or smaller, or say your lifestyle changed and maybe you wanna move it into a different room and use it as kind of a backdrop where you display the city or the 
beach or whatever and upgrade to a bigger panel. It's, it's modular, it's upgradable, it lasts forever, and it's very affordable to run. We're gonna be really taking a deep dive into a bunch of various elements regarding video walls here with the Just Video Walls crew in Fort Lauderdale. If you're interested, schedule a free consultation and we would love the opportunity to earn your business. Dream Media is nationwide and with these type of systems, we really like to get hands-on and hand curate a custom package for you and tailor every single aspect specifically to your needs and budget. There's so many use cases, guys, and it's, it's fun. It's a really, really cool product and we're excited to offer it to you. If you like this video, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and smash that subscribe button down below for more. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.